I'm Greg Zanis, inventor of DreamCar123.com. I'd like to talk to you a little bit more about how we get the light to travel into outer space from the very beginning. If you remember over here, we have a pyramid building and the sun will be hitting the building on the outside and we're going to transfer the light into the center of the building. Once it hits the center of the building, we're going to send it out the other direction and we're going to have a folding mirror on the floor that's going to aim the light very much like this to hit the targets. If you take a look at this painting here, you'll see several pyramid buildings on the ground and the light goes through the building and shoots up and hits the target. Here is another demonstration of the same thing. The light is hitting these two sides, this side and this side, but we're shooting it back out this side. Here's another painting showing the exact same thing. This is a much, much larger building. This is 169 stories tall without the tower for the radio. That's got nothing to do with what we're using it for. The light's coming in. We're diverting it to the center and we're sending it back out again to hit the targets. Here, this is a painting showing the exact same thing again. The light's all coming in from one direction, going through the pyramid, and this time it's going out and hitting a target that's not connected as part of the system, but going out into deep space. Also, all of these buildings here are all hitting this target. So when we have five buildings here, we're hitting this five times. When we have five more buildings here, we're hitting that five times. That's ten times. Over here, we have a configuration of any given planet and kind of showing what we're doing. So here's four buildings on the Earth and or any given planet, and they're shooting up hitting the target, hitting the target, hitting the target, hitting the target. So this is showing eight times the power of a pyramid. Now these two paintings, the next two paintings I'm going to show you are very much the same. Here's the exact same thing I just showed you. One, two, three, four buildings hitting the eight targets, hitting the eight targets again and again and again. The only difference in this painting is, of course, here's the square. I call that the mega beam. Now I've incorporated a second planet, of course. It's our moon and Earth and Moon together. Here we have four more buildings on the surface of the moon. And here we have four more buildings flying around in outer space. So eight and eight is 16. And what we'll do at that point, and I'll show you this in another painting, is we're going to send the light out 16 times the power and to hit other target areas. But before we go into deep space, we're going to, I'm going to show you the same painting before we go into deep space. Here's the Earth, and here's 16 targets. Now, here's the Earth again. And here's our moon, and here's our initial 16 targets. Now we picked up Mars, Venus, and Mercury. So we're getting a bigger and a bigger and a bigger beam. Now notice the similarities between this painting here and this painting here. It's almost the same painting. It's a much larger painting, and it's showing the exact same planets, Mars, Venus, Mercury, and Earth and Earth's moon. The next step beyond that is to add another solar system to our light trap maze. So here again will be the Earth, Mars, Venus, and Mercury, and Earth, and here we sent out four separate pyramid buildings, these are total living environments, to be circling Andromeda or any close by sun or sun system, and then here again we sent out four more buildings picking up more and more building space and more light. Now, if once 
these two are taken, and here they would be relative to the Big Dipper. One, two, these two added. And then we'll add another solar system to that. And then as we do that, then we're going to keep adding stars and stars and stars. Here again is really the final painting in the whole series. And it's, it's obviously the Big Dipper. And you can see here, we've approached the Big Dipper from Earth, and we started the building process. Now, I explained to you before, but I'll explain it again. We don't have to land on a planet. These could be in their own orbit around the first sun and or star that we come to. We refer to them as stars when they're far away from us, but once we're at the location, they're actually separate suns. And then once we've built these four, then we're going to keep sending projectiles out, more pyramid buildings, and we'll start building our next solar system. Now, of course, this distance looks very close, but this is light years away. These are very far apart. And, and again, when we start adding our third star and our fourth star to these, this, this may take 15 years to build these four additional in here. Time isn't going to be relative anymore because the people living in the communities will be able to support themselves continually. And then again, we want to add more stars and more stars and more stars. And, and here are two representations, one going straight down with a pyramid building leaving on a light beam. And here's another representation of a pyramid going up. And what we're doing here is we're trying to capture as many solar systems as we can on this mega, mega maze. And this journey, of course, is very different than anything that mankind has ever done before. And I'd also like to remind you that you can go to the web page and see the photographs of each of these individual paintings and as we build and build and build this light beam system we're, we're not so much saying yes you can travel at light speed but what I am saying is pretty clear we're never going to get to another solar system if we don't go on light beams and uh, and thank you very much. And uh, I'm Greg Zanis. And this is the DreamCar123.com webpage. Thank you very much.